tension was building up between the Russians and the Ukrainians. Some of them saw it and they quickly moved their ships and went to flag it somewhere else. They don't want to be going to that place where they can be caught in the crossfire and lose their ships or lose their businesses and so on. So they studied the, the, the market trends and also the, the whole economic, world economic scene seriously. So if you don't have a very vibrant marketing department under the operations, you are going, always going to lose out. The traffic and the market development is concerned with how to deploy one's resources. As I just explained, they always make sure that they study the market to see how trends are moving. And if they think that some places are not viable, they quickly pull out. So you see that there will be some areas, a certain ship or a certain liner a company was calling there. Now they don't come there anymore because they see that it's not viable. They come there, they get some few tons to pick and then they go back almost half empty. Meanwhile, they are going to have to pay all their overhead costs plus the, 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 the fixed costs of maybe the loan repayments and so on, mortgage repayments and other maintenance costs as well as the, 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 the cost of maintenance of the crew, their salaries and everything. And if they think they find out that coming on a certain route is not viable, they pull out. So all that is uh, undertaken by the marketing and scheduling department and by the operations. Liner, the operators in the liner business are the ship owners and the forwarding agents or ship and ship agents and loading brokers. So you have the ship owner, the forwarding agents, and then you have the ship agents and then the loading brokers. The forwarding agent, the ship owner, I mean, is clear enough what a, who a ship owner is. But the forwarding agents are those like you people, freight forwarders. So straight forward, then what do you do? What is your business? Straight forwarders. I think you've done the freight forwarding course already, isn't it? What is your business? Architects of transport. Architects of transport. Are you drawing the transport? Of <laughs> explain, explain. Architects of transport. Arrangement of cargoes from one point to the other. Yes. And then what? What else? Is that all you do? Sorry? You do documentation. Okay. And then what else? Services. You also look for cargoes. You do look for cargoes, consolidate them, and get them ready. Because it's when you get the cargoes that you do the documentation. Otherwise, what are you doing documentation for? So it is your duty to try to canvas for the cargoes and then when you do them, you consolidate them, prepare the documents, the insurance and everything, and then forward them. So they, they form 75% of the cargo uh, liner uh, supply. They are the people who get cargoes for the shipping lines. Straight forward it, okay. And then the ship agents. Ship agents are different from the forwarding agents. How do you, how do you uh, perceive that? How do you understand that? Who is a ship agent as against a forwarding agent? Anybody to try? Yes. I think a ship agent is only work for the ship. Mm -hmm. Not the fleet for the fleet on behalf of their clients. The cargoes. Yes. The ship, boat, the ship agents are those ones who, when the ship is coming, for example, one, they will go for the birthday meeting and then put forward their ships as ships that should come into the port. So they would obtain the permission to bring the ship into the port. When the ship is in the port, they are the people who arrange the various services that the ship needs. Somebody needs to go home, they would arrange the, the movement of the person from the ship to the airport and back, uh, uh, back home. They would also cater for their needs. If they need food, water, fuel, they make the arrangements and so on. They make arrangements for hospital. They are the ship agents. That work is done by the ship agents. So they work on behalf of the owner whenever the ship is in port. They represent the owner in that port. 
and some of them, what they do is the shipping lines, depending on how often, how well established they are in a place, then they set up a concrete agency uh, uh, office there. Like you have MERS line, you have MOL, you have MSC, and so on. They all have offices here, isn't it? Because they are well established here. But when the, the, the line is not established there, then they will use people like the loading brokers. The loading brokers will then uh, get them cargo and get uh, advise the shippers to bring their cargoes and so on. They don't have any dedicated person there. So when they are ship agents, then they have a whole setup. If you go to Mesk Line, for example, you know that Mesk Line was the one that built this uh, building now owned by Gapuha. That building it was originally for Mesk offices, and then they understand they are boss came from, from abroad and said, what, what do you mean by such building such a huge building here? Immediately sold it to Gapuha and they rented something. I think they even set up some containers as offices and he said that it's okay. They don't need to have a concrete office here. <laughs> so that is what they do. So the ship agents, they I would advise on the port details, the debt, the charges, the situation. They will make preparations for the reservation of beds for the, the ship, customs clearance and everything is done by the ship's uh, agents. Okay. So yes. The stevedores are the workers in the harbor. For example, in the harbor you have Kapuha have their stevedore, they have their gangs, then you have other companies who have gangs in the port. So they their work is mainly to lift the cargo on and off. So as and when, for example, the, the ship's agents would book guns. So they would talk to the, the various uh, 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 companies that operate in the port. They would talk to them, and if it is agreeable, then they come to work their ship. Okay. So the stevedores, the stevedores are those that go on the ship to work. But their counterparts on shore are the shore uh, handlers, okay. the longshoremen. So we have we, we finished with that explanation for that for the liners, right? Consortium. Consortia, I should cancel it. I only do the recording. Consortium, says you should come. or consortium for single men alliances and conferences. Uh, during the course of the progress of shipping, it came to a point where some shipping lines who plied particular routes realized that some of their counterparts were hitting below the belt when it came to pricing. They were always undercutting them. Okay. They would offer cheaper prices. And because of that, they were getting the cargoes, others were not getting it. So they decided to form what we call conferences. So, on, for example, in, the, in, in times past, you had something like the Ukwal Conference, you have the Co-op Conference, you had the Far East Conference. So ships on a particular run will pull their resources together, not resources, but they will pull their ships together and then uh, offer services. So that once you belong to a conference, the price is fixed. You cannot then go back and then try to woo shippers and give them lower prices so that the ships, the, price, the, ship, the cargoes get to your ship. So they form these conferences and they had, just like with the liner services, they have fit itinerary and they, therefore the only thing you, com you could compete for on a conference would be the quality of service you would be able to deliver. And that would depend on the type of ships and the maintenance of your ships. If your ships are always breaking down, even though you belong to a conference, the shippers might boycott your ship. They wouldn't want their cargoes coming on because halfway through the voyage you break down and the cargoes do not get to their destinations on time. So in the conferences, you don't bargain on the prices. The 
it is only the quality of service that counts. It was very, very important. So usually what the ships do, the shipping companies did was, they would elect, if it was a very competitive conference, they would elect some of their best ships, and you always contributed a certain number of ships. So it's like, if there are 15 companies, they would say that everybody should contribute only two ships. If 15 companies fly in that route, everybody should contribute two ships or four ships, depending on the volume that moves on that line. Okay, So you contribute the ships, and then those ships will be running that run okay, at intervals to the various ports that are involved in that conference. So that is how the liner the conferences work. So the liner conference is an agreement to ship owners, between the ship owners on the same route. The agreement may be formal or informal. That is, sometimes it is well documented, sometimes it is just by agreement of mouth, by word of mouth. But you see, one thing to note in, in, in uh, normal life is that everyday life is that an agreement by word of mouth, the fact that there's no paper covering it does not mean it is not a contract. It is